The U.S. Air Force has named Raytheon Missiles and Defense the sole source contractor for a multi-billion dollar program to develop the nation's next air-launched nuclear-armed cruise missile. Raytheon and Lockheed Martin were each awarded $900 million contracts in 2017 to develop competing technologies for the long-range standoff missile LRSO, which will replace the aging AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile. The Air Force had planned to select a single prime contractor for the LRSO program in 2022, but after extensive reviews of both companies' concepts, decided to focus on Raytheon's design. Major General Sean Morris, Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center Commander and Program Executive Officer for Strategic Systems, said in a statement, The competitive technologies development phase, including Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, enabled us to select a high-confidence design at this point in the acquisition process. Wes Kremer, president of Raytheon Missiles and Defense, said that the LRSO will be a critical contributor to the air-launched portion of America's nuclear triad. He said, Providing a modernized capability to the U.S. Air Force will strengthen our nation's deterrence posture. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why nuclear-tipped long-range standoff missile will be a significant boost to American nuclear deterrence. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time as a bonus. A nuclear triad is the capability to launch nukes from land, air, and sea and consists of land-launched nuclear missiles, strategic aircraft with nuclear bombs or missiles, and nuclear missile-armed submarines. The U.S. has two nuclear-tipped capable cruise missiles, AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile with W-80 warhead and BGM-109A Tomahawk, also armed with W-80 though the warheads are currently kept in reserve. BGM-109 Tomahawk is meant to be fired from land-based launchers, surface ships, and submarines. So the AGM-86, having a range of 1,500 kilometers or 2,400 miles, is the only option available to the U.S. Air Force at this point. The AGM-86 is a subsonic air-launched cruise missile that was developed to increase the effectiveness and survivability of the Boeing B-52 bomber as the missile can be fired from standoff ranges. In combination, the missile dilutes an enemy's forces and complicates air defense of its territory. The W-80 carried by the missile is a thermonuclear warhead with a variable yield of between 5 and 150 kilotons of TNT. The W-80 is a powerful asset. To give viewers a perspective, here's a comparison. Trinity test in New Mexico in July 1945, which led the world into the nuclear age, had a yield of 20 kilotons. Hiroshima's Little Boy bomb had a yield of 13 to 18 kilotons, whereas Nagasaki's Fat Man bomb had a yield of 20 to 22 kilotons of TNT. All variants of the AGM-86 missile are powered by a Williams F-107 turbofan jet engine that propels it at sustained subsonic speeds and can be launched from aircraft at both high and low altitudes. The missile deploys its folded wings, tail surfaces, and engine inlet after launch. Sophisticated guidance makes the missile very accurate. But the missile was developed starting 1982 and the American military strategist feels there's a need to replace it with something more advanced. The W-80 will also be replaced with a new warhead. Viewers may note that the LRSO was singled out for special review by former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis 
who was initially unconvinced if it was necessary. He later offered his full support to the weapon in the 2018 Nuclear Posture Review and called it key to preserving the efficacy of the bomber element of the strategic deterrent. The U.S. Air Force plans to spend up to $2.8 billion on the LRSO program through 2022. The service has estimated that it will spend nearly $10 billion to acquire the 1,000 LRSO missiles. This doesn't include the cost of a new nuclear warhead version under development. The Trump administration has requested $500 million in funding for LRSO development in the 2021 budget. Raytheon and Lockheed Martin were in the race. Lockheed Martin makes the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile JASSM, a stealthy air-launched cruise missile with a reported range of about 230 miles or 370 kilometers, and an extended range version that can reach about 550 miles or 885 kilometers. The company based its LRSO missile on the long-range version of the JASSM, which eventually lost. But Lockheed Martin still has something in it. Air Force officials said Lockheed Martin will still play a significant role and remains a key partner in the nation's nuclear defense. Elizabeth Thorne, LRSO System Program Manager for the Air Force, said, rather than being a down-select, in which a losing competitor is out of the picture, the Air Force is reframing its relationship with Lockheed to focus on specific technology development that may be applicable to the final LRSO design or reduce overall program risks. U.S. Air Force Material Command Chief General Arnold Bunch, Jr., then USAF's top uniformed acquisition officer at the Pentagon, said in 2017, the LRSO's technology maturation and risk reduction of TMRR phase would probably cost a little more than that for the ground-based strategic deterrent. He explained that this was to ensure that we have a design that we can produce that will be reliable and available once it gets out into the field. The idea was to avoid reliability issues with other cruise missiles. Since LRSO is nuclear capable, it's a weapon of strategic importance and hence most details are classified. The range is expected to be similar or a bit more than AGM-86B. There is no concept image released by Raytheon, but the missile is expected to have stealth characteristics so as to make it low observable. This will make the missile hard to detect, track and intercept. The idea is the stealth features will enable the missile to penetrate integrated air defenses fielded by adversaries like China and Russia. The missile is also likely to feature anti-jamming capabilities so that it can't be deceived by the enemy's electronic countermeasures or ECM attacks. As per reports, LRSO will not be a hypersonic weapon and the weapon will not have a conventional variant. However, U.S. Air Force officials have indicated recently that if a very long-range conventional cruise missile beyond the range of the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile Extreme Range JASSMXR, is needed, the LRSO would be the logical starting point. The LRSO missile is being designed to be carried by the current fleet of bombers, B-52 Straddle Fortress, B-1B Bone, B-2 Spirit, as well as the future B-21 Raider. The LRSO program is located at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida in the Air Delivered Weapons Directorate, the Nuclear Weapons Center headquartered at Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico. USAF said in a press release, the center is responsible for synchronizing all aspects of nuclear material management on behalf of Air Force Material Command in support of Air Force Global Strike Command. near-peer rivals of the U.S., like Russia and China, are investing in sophisticated air defense systems. Areas protected by these systems will be unsafe to penetrate with aircraft. For example, Russian S-400 has a detection range of 600 kilometers or 372 miles 
and an engagement range of 400 kilometers or around 250 miles. In this situation, the U.S. needs a weapon that can be launched from standoff distances that's beyond the strike envelope of these air defense systems. This is where LRSO will be useful. It will be launched from far off and the aircraft will be able to safely move out from harm's way as the missile streaks towards its intended target. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.